Hello and welcome to the Post to Post podcast. It is podcast number 92 coming at you on December 16th. Wait, December 15th, 2019. My name is Neil. Joined you with Jason. Hello, Jason. Great start. Great start to this podcast. Uh, you will notice if you are watching the video version of this that we have a new background and we have a new desk. This is a big deal for us. We didn't think we were going to get this done anytime soon. I was actually projecting probably late January, I think. Uh, and just to know, we are not done. Uh, no. This is... There's a lot of whites, grays, and a little bit of blacks going on. We understand that. Yeah. We, we need a little more contrast. Just... And for the audio listeners, like, I love you guys. I pump you guys up as much as I can, but this is definitely going to be geared a little bit towards the YouTubers because a lot of what we've, we're going to talk about and what we've done, at least pertaining to the set, is a visual thing. Yeah, for sure. So um, if you are an audio listener, basically we have a brick wall behind us that is definitely not fake. <laughs> you know, it's quite fake, obviously. Um, and the desk we actually made ourselves, and we'll post a video about how we made this eventually mm -hmm. and stuff. But uh, things that are coming is a lip for the front of this desk with um, probably a logo on the front. And in the background, we're going to put some shelves on the wall and then hang some jerseys from underneath the shelves. And right now we have our company mascot, Gary Bettman, yeah. in the background. This guy here is Gary Bettman because we had nothing to put back there. Yeah. It looks on camera like it's we are sitting right against the wall. That is that you. corner is literally six feet away or more. Like it's it's so far back. Yeah. So we need to put some stuff in the background just to give a little bit more of a perspective, a little bit more depth. Yeah. Uh, but we're super happy with with um, how it's turned out so far. We had some some help from your friend. Uh, yeah. Big Greg. shout out to Greg. Greg was the man. It was awesome. Uh, what yeah. we were going to do for the desk probably wouldn't have worked or it would have been very wobbly. Yes. So Greg was like, uh, you need to do a little bit better than that. So he came over twice and helped us. He helped with the desk and he helped us get the, the paneling up because there was an issue with the paneling in one of the corners. So Exactly. So big, huge help. Um, what you see on camera right now is probably about 60 to 70 percent of the desk. We can actually zoom out and have a person to my left and then a person to your right. Yeah, we can easily accommodate four yeah. people. We've got holes in the desk for all the cords, so it's all nice and tidy. Yeah. When we get the lip on, depending on where whether we go down or up or in the middle, we'll hide some some more. So I don't yeah. know. I'm pretty happy with it. It's turned out pretty good. Yeah, look, it's it makes our life a lot easier. Uh, I'm pretty excited. We built it in with keeping in mind that we will have more than two people on this podcast. Yeah, uh, future proofed a little bit. Yeah, future proof it for definitely. So yeah, we're pretty pumped. Um, and last week. In the podcast, I mentioned that um, if you guys want to donate to help the cause here, uh, you can. There's a link down in the description uh, of the on the YouTube. There's in the description of the YouTube video of this podcast. In last week's podcast, there is a, a direct link to a donate to PayPal. It's uh, paypal.me slash post to post. Um, you can donate. It's kind of like a tip. Like if you go to a restaurant, do you like your service, like your food or something like that? You just leave a tip, just a couple of bucks. Um, since the last podcast, we've actually had 14 contributions, a couple over $10, Ooh, which is good. very generous. So thank yeah. you very much for that. I really appreciate it. Um, so it, it's not, I'm not, we're not asking for a hundred dollars. We're not even like, you don't have to donate at all, but like just leave, leave a little tip if you're a long time viewer, maybe you really like it, something like that. All that money is going to go to paying off this desk and the walls. Um, and anyone who contributes, originally I was going to carve their name into the desk, but I think what we're actually going to do is get some little metal uh, plaques engraved. Yeah, like, you know, when someone donates something, they put a little, like, a framed thing, and it has, like, plates that are engraved, and it says thanks to special thanks to whoever for donating. Yeah. I think that's an easier option because we don't really have the stuff. To, like I was telling Neil when, he, when I seen the podcast, like, this may not be the best desk to try to carve in because, number one, we don't have anything to carve with, and... I think if we do have a lip on the front, like we can have the bars with the names in front of us so that every time we do this podcast, we can look at the names of the people. Who yeah, we'll put them on the back of the lip so we can see them yeah. every single time. So yeah. I think that's what we're going to do. And, um, we'll, and we'll give a shout out to everyone absolutely. That, call, that, that donates. Totally. Too. I have all the names written down with all the amounts and stuff. So um, if you want to get your name on a plaque to put on the desk, you have until the rest of the month, um, until the end of December. Uh, the link is in the description. And thank you so much for anyone else, anyone who's left a tip so far. We really appreciate that. All that money is going to go back into making this set better. And uh, there's definitely more stuff to do in the future, too. Like I said, the shelves and some other stuff, too. So uh, pretty excited. Um, yeah, so thank you, everyone. I really appreciate it. Okay, shall we move on to some hockey talk? we got hockey talk. This oh, is a busy week. We've got hockey talk. This is going to be a long podcast. Grab your hot chocolates. Grab your <sighs> whatever you need. But not peppermint hot chocolate was that the one yeah we did a, a hot chocolate taste test on uh, the second channel this week and that peppermint hot chocolate was not good no. if you haven't seen it go check it out 
Okay, the first thing I'd like to talk about is the whole Jim Montgomery situation because it's just weird. Like with the Peter DeBoer thing, okay, we'll get into it. There's expectations there. With the Bill Peters thing, okay. But with the Jim Montgomery thing, it was just a little bit out of the blue, yeah. was it not? No. So uh, we'll definitely get into it in a little bit more depth, but just a couple of things, and then we're going to hear from our fellow uh, Yeehaw friend, T Park. Um, yeah. But what we know is it's not player related, it has nothing to do with Jamie Benn or Radulov or anyone else on the team. It's not staff related. Um, he was fired due to a material act of unprofessionalism contrary to the values and standards held by the Dallas Dyers organization. That sounds like you might have just read that somewhere. I might have just read that. <laughs> might have been my notes. Yeah. Uh, so it's a, it's kind of a weird situation. And who better to hear their opinion than a fellow Dallas Dallas's fan. number one Colorado Avalanche fan. Yeah. <laughs> Right on, T-Park. That's right, T-Park. Okay, let's hear from T-Park and uh, hear what he has to say. Hello once again. It's been a little bit. This is T-Park down here in Texas reporting on some unfortunate news, as you all know, regarding our former head coach, Jim Montgomery. Uh, It's been a weird week. I know the other morning I was woken up to a text, uh, a few tags on Discord, Twitter, saying, hey, did you see this headline? And it's just a screenshot of... Jim Montgomery relieved of his duties. And as some of my friends pointed out, it did read and look like an April Fool's joke, but alas, it's December. Um, So a lot of confusion, me and all my friends and fellow fans jumped on Twitter and tried to figure out what was going on. And all we knew is he'd been relieved early in the morning and that there would be a press conference around 11 a.m. So we all sat and eagerly waited to hear Uh, from the old wise one, Jim Nill, what was going on. Um, Didn't make any sense at the time. There was already rumors between 9 and 11 a.m. that it was because of abuse, it was because of the four-point plan Gary Bettman had laid out the night before. Uh, It's a weird time for head coaches, as we all know, so we only could speculate. Uh, It was at that time that we watched the pathetic press conference to discover Jim Nill was giving no answers. It was basically his way of telling the media, don't have anything to tell you. Um, That was about it. Lots of questions, not a lot of answers. Uh, What we did know is that it was not player related, past or present, and that pertains to his time in Denver as a college coach, as well as any of the Stars players past and present. Um, So that ruled out a lot of things. They said it had nothing to do with Bettman's plan. It had nothing to do with the initiative in the NHL to kind of clean house on what many would call the old way of coaching. Kind of bleeds over into abuse, but that's a whole other discussion. Um, So it wasn't that. Okay, cool. Well, what else could it be? Let the speculation begin. Uh, Another thing we were told is, you know, Rick Bonus, one of our assistant coaches, would be taking over. A whole other topic in itself. Um, and that we would be making no further coaching changes for the rest of the season. This was it. Take that as you will, but that was his plan. Uh, There's no criminal investigation. It was strictly internal. You could take that a number of ways, but we'll get back to that. Uh, They shifted some people around from our AHL team up to assist and a little bit of vice versa. Um, He said that it came from a phone call Sunday regarding something that happened the past few days. So, did it happen on the Winnipeg trip? Most likely. Do we have an answer yet? No, we don't. So, whatever it was, was severe enough for him to get a call about it Sunday, confirm in the details and investigate in about 12 hours, and then tell us Monday morning he was gone. Pretty serious, whatever it was. Um, again, it had nothing to do with Batman's conference. There weren't any players involved. They also said there was no employees involved. So that really limits down what it could be. Um, Some people said it could be related to sports betting. I'm inclined to think that's not the case because that kind of falls into the criminal investigation side of things. And that doesn't line up with what Jim Nils said. Uh, It could be related to some sort of consensual harassment, if you know what I mean, uh, between himself and someone unaffiliated with the stars. Uh, There's a number of things. There's also rumors from various sources, some somewhat trustworthy, that it's alcohol abuse related. Um, Time will tell. Uh, They confronted Jim about it. He didn't want to comment. He said, I'm not talking. There will be a day where I talk, but it's not today. 
it's kind of a waiting game at this point. Um, we could do all kinds of speculation, but I guess the real point is we don't have any answers and a lot of Stars fans just feel really sad because if you compare the personalities of Jim Montgomery and Ken Hitchcock, it's night and day. Not just coaching style and personality, but how they treated the media and the, the fun they had with it. Um, it's crazy. And the players were blindsided by it. That's the other thing. None of the players knew it was happening. They didn't think it could happen. It's frustrating. Either they're really good at keeping a straight face. So let's just say it was an alcohol abuse problem. Um, I feel like they could at least admit at, when questioned that, you know, well, I didn't think it'd come down to this, but here we are. Like they would give us something to say they could see it coming, but they didn't. None of the players knew. They're all devastated. Um, they're sad. The media is sad. We're sad. Um, just a really strange situation. I, I almost wish it was a situation, um, this is terrible to say, but you know, like the Bill Peters situation where you can point to a specific instance and say, that was wrong, love you coach, but you can't do that, get out of here. But we don't, we don't have that satisfaction. Um, we just have a lot of questions. So we're stuck with a coach with a severely losing record um, trying to get us through the rest of the season. And he was quoted saying, we will figure it out as we go along. And another quote was, we're just going to try and enjoy the rest of the games. Lots of inspiration there. Uh, so yeah, very weird week. Um, we just, we started out one, seven and one next to last in the NHL. And then we went on a crazy, like 14 game point streak. Um, it's been a great about month and a half. And we thought the coach was, kind of doing well, letting the players play to their strengths, which is something we were frustrated about before. And then just like that, he's gone. So what we're really relying on now is a good bond between the assistant coaches and the players, as well as the players coming together and deciding, hey, we're going to carry on what we were taught, the system that we had in place, and we're going to stick to it and try and do it together. Um, it's going to be a heck of a ride and we'll see where it takes us. All right. Well, nice to see a Dallas Stars fan in a Colorado Avalanche jersey. <laughs> good job, Deepak. <laughs> um, looking good. Night like your hair. Yeah, buddy. Um, he said a lot of things that I agreed with. And one of the things he said that I really liked was, you know, with the Bill Peters thing, we can look at it and we can say, you did this. This is bad. Yes. Yada, yada, yada. Or with someone else, like there's reasons. There's no reason with Jim Montgomery. No. It was. We, vague beyond vague. Here's the thing. I'm disappointed that we don't know. However, if you're going to tell us, then don't tell us it's about a situation that happened previously in the week. We got a call on Sunday and now we're making a decision. But then don't tell us what it was. Like, If you're going to tell us that, then you need to tell us what happened. I say don't tell us anything. See, don't I mention there's anything that happened and you got a call on Sunday. There's no need to mention that if you're not going to say what it actually was. Just don't say anything. Just say he was fired and we're moving on. But I think he had to say that. He couldn't say nothing at all. He had to say something. No, <laughs> see, I, I understand where you're coming from, though. But I also understand his point of view. Like, you can't just come out and say we let this guy go and we're not going to talk about it. Why? Because you can't. But he just did that. And <laughs> they they have to know why without knowing why. I I, I which is weird, but I, I understand. Like it. So say, say, um, say it's something incredibly inappropriate. Like say he met like, and this is not speculation. I'm just gonna say he met up with like a hooker or a prostitute. <laughs> Like, okay, like, say, okay. like, his family and his children do not need to hear that he was fired because he met up with a prostitute. Wouldn't they know that already? The mother probably knows. The kids probably don't. But they don't need the whole world knowing, like, that this the kids, you know, the kids go to school and all their classmates know that, hey, your dad was off sleeping with a woman or whatever. And that's not what, and I'm not predicting that's what happened, obviously, but there are situations where for his family's sake and for his personal life's sake, I don't think you'd want to throw him under the bus. Yeah. I, which I think this is probably something similar to that. Okay. Like, I'm not saying it's similar to prostitution, but it's 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 a non-hockey thing. There's speculation that it could be alcohol. It could related. be. So, and in order, for, like, for me, in order for it to be an alcohol-related thing, it has to be pretty severe. Like, I can't imagine right. him just being out at a bar having some drinks and being foolish is enough to fire a guy. Right. So, obviously, something happened. And to, and the way I look at this situation is this guy has a family, this guy, like, because if you listen to the post game or the post 
announcement when uh, they had the new head coach come on. You listen to Jim Neal talk. They still really like Yo, Jim Montgomery. They absolutely. kept calling him like Monty or Monty or whatever. Like they were all, everyone was surprised. Like the new coach got the call in the morning that he was going to be the new coach. Like it mm. just happened that fast. So their case, like from what I was reading, the case they had against him through their investigation was airtight. That's why it happened so fast. I would, yeah, but I, 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 I completely agree with everything you're saying. But I understand from you, you're like, I either want to know or I don't want to well, just, know. Just all like, just say, you know what, we want to go in a different direction. We weren't happy with the way the team started in the first nine games or whatever. Things are turned around, but still, you know, things aren't working out or whatever. Maybe Let's bring in like lie to me. Maybe they were worried it was going to get out and they tried to get ahead of it. But it was one of those things that you don't throw your man under the bus for. So, hey, if it gets out, you know now. Mm-hmm. But we're not the ones that told you what happened. I just feel bad for the Dallas Stars fans because I think they deserve to know. It, it was weird listening to all the different like shows and people who talk hockey because literally nobody knew. Yeah, and that's the thing. We can only speculate. Like every, Everyone's we'll like, this but... is big news. Like a coach gets fired and everyone on their own shows and segments are talking about this guy getting fired. But they have nothing to talk about because they yeah. don't know why. And that was even one of the questions that was asked in the uh, the news conference was, you understand that this is going to breed speculation yeah. because you're literally not saying anything. It's just, I understand, but there's nothing I can say at this time. And like, it's so aggravating because with the Bill Peters thing or whoever else, Bab- Babcock, there's a reason. There's like, you did this wrong. There's a reason. I don't like it. I can get over it. It's it's done. Like everyone deals with their own in their own way. Now there's just aggravation because we don't know what the hell's going on. So would you rather them come out and say? We let him go. We're not telling you why, which leaves it totally open ended. Yes. Or would you rather they said it was unprofessional conduct? So he, you, at least you know that he did something non hockey related, but it's still open ended. Because I, you, you know more now without knowing anything than you would have if he would have just said, We're not telling you anything. I would have liked him to say, We're letting Jim Neal go. We're not telling you anything except for the fact that it has nothing to do with the GM conduct meetings or whatever with Gary Bettman has Mm -hmm. nothing to do with that new policy or whatever. We're just, we're letting him go for our own reasons. And then if a reporter asks, is it due to performance? Because clearly it's not due to performance. They've, you know, they, they sucked. They got better. They plateaued. It's okay. Like they're not in a bad spot. Really? I don't, it's not worthy of firing the guy that just took over. I don't think. I agree. So you just say for our own reasons, (laughs) but that's, but then you're going to, I guarantee you'd be on this podcast saying he was too vague. Yeah, but at least there's like there's nothing. But but now we know hint at something. But now we know it's targeted. Like we know it's off ice unprofessionalism, which you know it goes into a couple categories. So we know that he did something they shouldn't have done, and likely it it embarrassed his family. I I know I'm just greedy. I just want to know. Like I I do too. But I like I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm saying I understand why he did it because yeah, something happened. They thought it was going to get out. They jumped ahead of it, yes. and he didn't want to be the one responsible for telling the world. Because I think eventually we are going to find out what this was. Yes. Oh, I, like someone's no going way. to find out, and it's going to get out. Like Twitter's a crazy machine. Yeah, and I think even G Park mentioned in his video that I think Jim Montgomery said, or he'll talk about it, but not today or not yeah. anytime soon. Like eventually, when he's ready to talk, he'll talk. So mm-hmm. uh, we'll know eventually, but probably not anytime soon. And by that, it could be the next three years. Yeah. Who knows? So. Yeah, uh, aggravating situation, but thanks, Steve Park, for, for um, giving your two cents there. I really appreciate that. I uh, hope we can get you on the podcast a little bit more. Um, you're a good dude. All right, move on to the next topic. The reason why I'm wearing yes. the Philadelphia Flyers jersey and hat. There's always a reason why I wear I said that, I think, podcast. two podcasts yeah. ago. There's always a reason. Um, I'm sure most of you have heard about Oscar Limbaugh's, uh, Limbaugh's situation. Yep. Um, it's so It doesn't happen often in the, in the NHL. He is diagnosed with... Ewing sarcoma. Yeah, Ewing sar- sarcoma, sarcoma yeah. which is a bone cancer. Bone and soft tissue cancer. Yeah, and apparently yeah. it's more on the rare side of Yeah, I think cancers. I read two out of every one million people in the States gets it, that gets cancer. So not the most common two cancer. Two out of one million? Maybe it's one out of I think it said two, or two percent out of one million. Two, oh, two percent. So I don't know why they wouldn't just give the number. two percent of one million? Don't make me do math. Like 200, <laughs> 20, 2,000, 20,000. There, I covered all the bases. One of those is right. Yeah. Um... It's, um, so it's obviously tough. he's not expected to play the rest of the season. He's out for the season and there's no timetable for him no. to return, um, which is completely understandable. They said, I did some research into this um, cancer last night. Um, I didn't write it in my notes, but I, I do remember this fact. They said the five-year survival rate when you get diagnosed is 70%. And that, that percentage is probably based on people who are not um, watched medically as 
tightly and as closely as yes, NHL players. They said by the time you're usually diagnosed with this cancer, it's already spread to right. some other places. So he should have had it detected probably. He would be way ahead of the average way, Joe because of ahead. the team doctors. So yeah. probably 70% worst case scenario for him. Yes. Um, realistically, it's probably more like 80 or 90% for him. Did you see the photo in the in the locker room with his jersey did, hanging that up? That was pretty powerful. Pretty awesome. Pretty, pretty powerful. I was going to wear my Hockey Fights Cancer hat, which is a St. Louis Blues hat. But I thought it would look weird yeah. if I wore St. Louis Blues yeah, <laughs> and Philadelphia no. Flyers jersey. No, so. you're dressed appropriately. Um, definitely wearing the Philly Philly merch for today. Um, it's and it's it doesn't happen often in the NHL, but the NHL looks back and you see Phil Kessel had cancer, mm-hmm. Sacco Koivu had cancer. There have been others who had cancer, and that's why the NHL puts such an emphasis on hockey fights cancer. Um, every NHL team part- participates in it. It's a big deal. Yeah, and um, yep. I think the whole NHL. Uh, player group, fan group, and business group from every team is definitely grieving a little bit because uh, mm-hmm. it's scary and it could happen to freaking anyone, and it's like it's wild. I mean, we talked about it what three weeks ago, two weeks ago. We talked about hockey fights cancer because yeah. the there was the pink boards going up, and yeah. then look, a couple weeks later, one of the players. So yeah, like, it's, uh, you never know, right? Tough times, and he's. I mean, he's young. Yeah, it's not like he's thirty five and had a great career. He's no. he spent his entire life revolved around hockey. He got in the NHL. I think he's three years into his mm. into playing in the NHL, and uh, now this happens. That's really really tough, but I mean maybe that's that's uh, a good thing in a way because when you're younger, your body is more efficient at fighting most diseases. So mm. if this happened to him later in life, maybe his chances wouldn't be the same. But yeah, it's tough. Um, sticking with the injury, not that that was an injury, but um, a this, player, this player is an injury. A, a player being out of the lineup. Uh, no, and not not what you're thinking of. Dylan Demel oh. um, get injured recently. He's out three to four weeks with a broken finger. So obviously not, not as serious as cancer, but um, I wouldn't want a broken finger. No, no, I have a broken ankle, and I would <laughs> like I wouldn't recommend breaking anything. Yeah. Um, but anyways, I, the reason I'm bringing this up, there's injuries all the time, but I'm, the reason I'm bringing this up is because the coach uh, DJ Smith said something really interesting about uh, Dylan Demel. He said maybe the most underrated player on the team. Ooh. So you got players on the team like Thomas Shabbat, mm. uh, Jean Gabriel Pajot, who is at the name that almost everyone knows now because he's having a really good year. And a couple of years ago, he had a really good year too. But Dylan DeMello, who came from the San Jose Sharks in that trade with uh, Carlson, I believe, um, pretty good player. I really liked him for San Jose. I like him for uh, Ottawa, but I'm a little surprised by that by that comment in a good way. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm. That's cool that he said that. That that probably means a lot to uh, Dylan. So. All right, um, Taylor Hall. Let's talk about Taylor Hall. Now, he was held out of the lineup for the past two games. Yep. It was rumored that he was going to get traded to Colorado. Yep. Arizona was, or not Arizona, uh, New Jersey was in Colorado playing them. And then New Jersey went to uh, Phoenix or Arizona. Some people even thought he was going to show up on the ice with it, a Colorado oh, Avalanche jersey. You imagine? Oh, you imagine that? Just bam, okay, switch dressing rooms. I think that's happened before recently. <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember who it was, but it might have been Duchesne. I think Duchesne got really? traded from Ottawa to Columbus, and then their next game was Columbus versus Ottawa. Wow. I think that was last year, I think. Um, anyways, pretty wild. Oh, no, it's the year before, maybe. I don't remember. Um, anyways, pretty wild, pretty crazy. Um, Obviously, I, I as of this think. podcast, nothing's happened yet. As we're filming this, nothing's happened. I don't I don't know what to think about this because, I mean, New Jersey won last night without Taylor Hall against a very good Arizona Coyotes team who is, I believe, at top of the – Pacific Division so far this year. Do you think that was a statement game from New Jersey? Just like, we don't need Taylor Hall. I don't know. Do you think they're frustrated with him? The players? Yeah. Because he's leaving because he's tired of being on teams who can't make the playoffs. As in, like, when his free agency comes up, he's leaving? or Right now. But, I mean, it's not up to him to leave right now. It kind of is. Well, I mean, the GM has to be the one that He doesn't want to be on the team for the rest of the year. He doesn't want to miss the playoffs again. No, I mean... I don't know. He's he apparently permission was given where teams can speak to him. Yeah. So he's. I think I think the GM is looking to get rid of him too. Obviously. Yeah, he left him out of the last two. And I mean, his friggin' wife or girlfriend had a going away party. Did you see that? No. So this came out last night um, on Instagram. There's a there's a party at Taylor Hall's girlfriend or wife's house. I don't know whether she's his girlfriend or wife, and all of the wives of the other players are there and they're having a bon voyage party no for way and there's pictures online oh yeah that's amazing so 
They think he's leaving. Uh, well, and apparently Arizona right now is the front runner. That's what we're reading everywhere. Whether I, or not, like, I don't know. Like I just read before we started filming this podcast that the Florida Panthers and the Arizona Coyotes are now the front runners, and they've, they're they starting to up their offers. Um, but there are other teams in the mix. Uh, Islanders, Panthers, Avalanche, Flames, Canadians, uh, Coyotes, and a couple of more, apparently. Up to hmm. 12 teams who are making plays for Taylor Hall. So Interesting. I don't really know what to make of this. Uh, not unusual. We've seen stuff like this before, but I have no predictions because... Oh, who knows? Yeah. Taylor Hall is getting a lot of hate right now. Do you think it's deserved or do you think he's, do you I think mean, it's not quite as deserved? Or do you think you kind of feel like, man, what are you doing? Like, do you think he's, do you, do you think he's still a good player? Absolutely. Yeah. I just like, at, for, at first you're kind of like, man, just stick with it. Like just, you know, there's great players on, on really crappy teams. Like just do it. Like look at what's his face with Arizona who was there forever. And he just retired recently. Doan? Uh, yeah. Shane Doan. Mm-hmm. Like, he didn't do. He was an amazing player. Didn't do much in his career because of the yeah. team he was on. But when you think about it, if I'm Taylor Hall, I'm not going to waste most of my NHL career playing for teams that don't make the playoffs and and aren't working out. I'm probably going to be as selfish as him and want to go. So elsewhere. his free agency is up at the end of the year, right? Correct. So do you think he should be able to pick where he goes? Um, yeah, that's why they're giving him permission because they might do a sign-in trade. Yeah. to get the eight years. And a lot of the teams I've been hearing right now don't want the sign. They just want him for a playoff run. Oh, really? which is why rental. which is why the trades aren't as high yeah as New Jersey wants which is why nothing's been done yet mm. I just heard a doorbell yep um, that's interesting should we take a break or should we just keep talking no let's take a break okay we'll be right back all right I'm back <laughs> okay I'm back <laughs> we just had a Sunday delivery which is very rare up in Canada but it's Christmas time um, I have a package that I ordered last week and it's stuff that I bought for the podcast. Oh, it's for the podcast. It's for the podcast. Yeah, I have no idea what's in this. You don't know what it is. Thing. So I'm actually going to get Neil to open this. Oh, you want me to open it? Yeah, you're going to open this because okay. I, I know what's in it. This is like a surprise Christmas. It's not a Christmas. Like, okay. don't get too excited. Like, this is not like, you're not going to be like, heck yeah, this is pro. You're not going to be like that. You're going to be like, cool. That's what you're going to give us. <laughs> okay. But I'm very excited about this because I want to try it. And obviously I can't try it right now, but. Um, but it's just, for the podcast. This is 100% for the podcast, what's in here. So it's a relevant to this video it's it's irrelevant yes okay that's why we're doing this in the pie okay okay it's so for if you're an audio listener i'm sorry we're just gonna have to have neil describe what he's opening i'll give you some asmr package yeah. opening yeah like that's the last thing i was expecting was a doorbell to ring during, <laughs> during this podcast because there's literally nobody home oh, I, there's, okay there's multiple things okay there should be three things in there yeah and i hope you open pull them out in the right order which one i can't tell by feeling Okay, I'm gonna bring out the biggest one first. Okay, look at me and pull it out, and I'll tell you whether to put it back or not. Okay. Oh, let me see that. It's a bag, like. Oh. Okay, show me the next one. Okay, definitely open that one last. Okay, definitely open that one last. Yeah. Okay, so you can look at that one and then this one next. Okay, go ahead and look now. <laughs> uh, thank you for choosing green. I have no idea what this is. One sec. Doing an unboxing <laughs> in the middle of a podcast is literally probably the dumbest thing we've ever done. But <laughs> I was I was kind of hoping, like, before we started this going, it actually, got, I got a note for delivery notice. I'm like, on a Sunday? Like, man, that'd be pro if it came before, but it didn't. Oh, man, yeah. These are useful. Yep, we were just talking about those, right? Yeah, I got a couple of these. Okay. You, can't have, you can never have too many of these. So basically, it's a 3.5 uh, millimeter jack that accepts... Quarter inch jacks. Quarter inch jacks. Because a lot of these things we use with our mixer are quarter inch jacks. Okay, so this is the second one. Yep. Oh, I think I know what you bought. Did you buy one of those mute things? <laughs> I can't say. All right. So you just open the bag and now there's two bags inside the bag. It says 15 feet. What the heck is this? Okay. Oh, are these lights? No, they can't be lights. It tells you right on the package what they are. Yeah. Oh, this is what we need. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> nope. But, man, again, you can never have too many okay. of these. So we got 3.5 millimeter, two, two, two 3.5 millimeter extension cables that are how long? 15 feet? 15 feet each. That's a lot of feet. That's, that's intense. But they need to be that long. Okay, now open the last thing, and you can literally look at it when you pull it out. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, so... If you've ever watched uh, any kind of sports broadcasting, then you'll know some of the, uh, not announcers, but 
telecast people will wear these things. All of the telecast people wear these things. They're called IFBs. IFBs, yes. So basically, I can see on camera, it's a little kind of scrunched up. It's like an earbud that goes in your ear, but it's got a clear cord. So the cord wraps around your ear and then goes down the back of your shirt. So this way we can actually hear how we sound without wearing headphones and looking like idiots. Yeah. And we can also take calls on the mixer and be able to hear who's calling without in. wearing headphones without wearing headphones. Yeah. So we're, we're going to look exactly how we look now, except for there's going to be one little thing going around our ear, which shouldn't show up because of the angle of our desk. And we're able to, we're able to adjust our microphone if we need to adjust the microphones or if we have guests and some guests are talking too loud or talking too softly, Neil can adjust the mixer accordingly. And it's just without wearing giant headphones on the video. <laughs> yeah. So basically <laughs> that will run down the back of your shirt plug into the 15 foot extension cord and then into the headphone thing mm. over there. Well, that's a good way to announce that we're doing we're taking calls on the podcast <laughs> coming up soon. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh so yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Just that's, totally that's random. Totally irrelevant to most most people listening right now, but no, it's kind of a good segue into progression of the podcast though because we do want to start taking calls. It just uh, shows that important. we're trying to further advance everything like we're trying to advance our set we're trying to advance the tech we're using we want to have be able people to be able to call in so like brent could call in or viewers could call in or t park's little piece that he did earlier he could have done it live with us and we could have had a discussion with him so it just it just gives us options where i think what i'd like to do is uh make a phone number or something where not just the people we know can call in everyone can call in you guys at home can call in if you want to say something uh we're not sure if we're going to do it live we'll probably do some live for sure but it would be cool to take some voicemails as well. It just gives us the option to do both. Exactly, yeah. So, and that was one of the questions I was going to have. If we take calls, we're going to have to put on headphones. For yes, this, and I didn't won't. I didn't want to put on headphones because I'm I like this. I yeah. like wearing the little silent earpiece where we look as we look now. Totally. Yeah. Good job. Heck yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah, that, delivery man. You know what? That's cool. But it's also like, heck yeah. <laughs> heck yeah. All right. And now back to the podcast. I don't know what we were talking about. What were we talking about? Uh, we were talking with Taylor Hall, but we were pretty much done. Okay. So, yes, we were. Um, I want to talk about the GM meetings. Okay. Now, or the, not GM meetings, but the, I guess that were kind of GM meetings. They were the, Gary it was, Bevan, it was the board of governors. The meetings. board of governors. Yeah. yeah. More meeting. important than the GM meetings. The board of governors is, is the, the owners. The legits. The owners. Yeah. So obviously they're having conversations with the new, uh, conduct policy and stuff yeah. that they okay. just released. So if you wouldn't mind, uh reading through this okay so this will be this won't be as long as that crap i read last time or two times ago like it was just too long right like yeah so this is going to be gary bettman came out so obviously the akim lu allegations came out and the league was taken completely by surprise and gary bettman is not a man who likes to be taken by surprise so you knew there was going to be there was going to be an answer for this <laughs> what are you doing I'm looking at gary bettman in the background <laughs> oh i thought you were like showing me your empty ear that you no. took it out or something <laughs> yeah that's hilarious back there i forgot that was there um, so anyway, um, he, he had a 24 minute long video that he talked to reporters about, and it was basically him just repeating the same stuff that he talked to with the owners. And mm-hmm. if there's one thing that I noticed, and I did notice this, and then I even heard Elliot Friedman talking about is Gary Bettman's power is growing significantly all the time. Like when Gary Bettman first started, he was the, you know, the, the pundit for the owners, like he did their bidding. Yes. And he's to a point now where he's basically telling the owners, this is how it's going to be. Well, didn't he just induct himself into the Hockey Hall of Fame? <laughs> yeah, like basically, yeah, as a builder. <laughs> you put yourself in yeah, the Hockey I'm Hall a builder. Fame. That's amazing. I've grown the sport. Uh, which is true, okay, unfortunately. So, so he opened it up by saying, the world is changing for the better. Uh, this is an opportunity and a moment for positive change. And this evolution should be expedited for the benefit of everyone associated with the game we love. And even while change is taking effect, taking effect, we still must acknowledge things that were wrong in the past. So... Obviously, this is a talking about a camellia. But so, okay, not to interrupt, but, and I, we've kind of already talked about this, but how far back is the line? There is no line. So if someone did something in 1965. Okay, I think that line is probably. Well, you can't say there is no line and then say that's too far back. I don't think. There's got to be a line. I don't think the people from that far back are going to say anything. But what if Wayne Gretzky did something in the early or in the mid 1980s, we'll say, and we're just finding out about it now. What happens? He's gonna get a lot of heat. But that's that's quite a while ago. Is it too far back? But I mean, what I mean, what can you do? What if Guy Lafleur did something in the 70s? Like, I don't think it pertains because those people don't necessarily have anything to do with hockey anymore. Like, you can't. Oh, I mean, Wayne you Gretzky's can't. He's involved. 
Yeah, I suppose if he did something, maybe. But if someone's retired and they have nothing to do with the game anymore, there's nothing you can do to them because they I mean they didn't do anything illegal. Mm-hmm. It's just you can't. There's no way to punch them. You can't find them. You can't fire them. What if Gerard Gallant did something as a player 30 years ago, and now gets punished as a, a coach? If it was now. real bad, I could see it. You think so? Yeah, I think it's no hold bars. Like I just want to know where the line is. How far back can we go? I don't think there is a line. What if Gordy Howe? We found out some, some, that Gordy Howe did something. Is it going to ruin his legacy? Yeah. Because we went back to the... Yep, because that's how it is. I don't like it, All right. but that's how it is. All right, sorry to interrupt. But uh, that's all right. On. So I was done talking about that anyway. So he made four <laughs> points in his speech. The four-point plan is uh, Deep Park reference. Um, the first one was specifically that he doesn't like surprises. The Bill Peters situation was a surprise. Um, he says, going forward, our clubs are on notice that if they become aware of an incident of conduct involving NHL personnel on or off the ice that is clearly inappropriate, unlawful, or demonstrably abusive, or that may violate the league's policies involving um, the NHL club personnel on or off the ice, we want the league office, and then he said, you either call Bill Daly or you call me. Those are the only two points of call. Which is a pretty intense thing to say. Like, yeah. you, you don't call my assistant, yeah. you don't call this line. You call me. You call me. Yeah, it says, we must be advised. And then um, there will be a zero tolerance for any failure to notify us. And in the event of such a failure, the club and individuals involved can expect severe discipline. What does that mean? So what is severe discipline? He didn't get into that, but... If it's money, it doesn't really matter. What if it's draft picks? What if it's you don't get to pick oh, a draft? I, I don't think they can do that. They've done that in football. Really? Yes. That's intense. Like se- severe. But that you can't fine a billionaire and say it's severe. That's not going to affect them. If you say you lose your draft picks for it this year, this year, this year, that's pretty severe. But how do you punish the? Like that's punishing the players. That's punishing the owners too. Yeah, but that's punishing the players. It's punishing everybody. That's it's the, I, that's not fair to the players. It doesn't matter. It's the club. Man, that's going to be bad news if that happens. But that, that's just how it is. And, and it's a shot to them, right? It's, it's a saying, if you're, a, if you're in a management position and you know there's wrongdoing going on and you don't report it, your club's going to pay the price. And that's everybody. What if it's in the sense that... The general manager is in charge of the club, right? And then the president and then the owner. But, I mean, that's your ship. You're responsible for it. So, I mean, it, it doesn't really matter. Like, it's like in my line of work or in your line of work, it doesn't really matter what I do. If my bosses do something dumb, mm-hmm. we're going down the ship with them i guess but like, it, it totally sucks for the players but yeah i don't know it's, it's it's i think that's too much i don't i like it you i think like it's it? i think it's deterrence i think it's i think they should start off a little bit i don't think it's ever gonna happen no i, I think, think i think i think by keeping it vague you're on notice that don't do this i, I can i can see it being something like for the next five years your team will not participate in the all-star game it will not participate in yeah but the players would like classics. that classics the players would like that will not participate in any international games anything to do with i think it's fun. going to be a fine and i could totally see it being draft picks i just i don't understand how they could jeopardize the future of it because you're you're managing your team poorly but the, i don't know i know I you don't like it but it's I'm, too I'm, severe I think. i'm down with it i like it severe all right just because i know they've done it in other sports Hmm. So that was the first point. Second point was in order to expedite a change in culture and make clear the expect expectations we have for the conduct of coaches and other personnel. Uh, they're going to formulate a mandatory annual program on counseling, consciousness raising, education and training on diversity and inclusion. I don't like this. I, I understand it. It's important, but it's just kind of like a bullcrap thing. That it's a mandatory thing that you got to take. You shouldn't have to. Okay, if you're at this level in the NHL and you need to take classes on how to be a better person, get out of the NHL. Like, <laughs> see, I think it's going to be. I just think it's. Silly. I think this is going to go down to the other leagues too. I think it's going to go minor league, the real minor leagues, and then like the leagues that maybe even your kids are playing in. No, I think maybe that's important. Start there. See, I that, don't think. That, see, that's what I think too. I think you should be starting below, and then letting that those people trickle their way up exactly who have had the training lower you can't you can't get a ken hitchcock and be like can you go to diversity training ken hitchcock? <laughs> ken hitchcock's gonna he's go gonna to... go like this and then he's gonna go okay <laughs> <laughs> i don't like it f you see you there yeah probably <laughs> so i mean it's it ends for everybody it's the coaches the gms the assistant gms yeah like it's a good idea and they have to take it but... every year Every year? Okay. Yearly. That's, and that's ridiculous. the program is not made by the NHL. They're actually paying an outside company, like one of those, like, 
don't know if it's like an e-learning counseling type companies, but they're going to formulate this thing. So it's like people that have nothing to do with the game. They're just like counselors and like program HR people. creators. Yes. And they're going to come up with a, a program and it's either going to be tailored for everybody or mm. it's going to be individual. I imagine it's just going to be a generic. Okay. How well, to be nice to people. Here's the thing. You give me 1% of what you're paying them. You bring in everyone over here. We'll gather them around a little group and I'm going to stand <laughs> up and say, yo, don't be dicks. Yeah. And then everyone's going to go home and then like that. Like it's, it, I just think it's silly. I just. If you can't be a good person on your own to that extent, like, I don't know. I just, and every year? It's yearly, you yeah. You go to class every year? Yep. I just think it's silly. Just be good people, people. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like, you knew changes were going to come when when all this started going out, but Inevitable. yeah, they're, they're going crazy. Like, it I don't know. I, I'm not totally against it, but I, I think it is... It's a little too fluffy. Like my work, we have to take training every two years on stuff that we find so stupid and it basically has nothing to do with our job. Almost every company has this. Yeah. So stuff. basically the NHL never had one of these before and now it's going to have one. Yeah. So every year, all the coaches, all the GMs, the, the assistant GMs, no, the players don't. This is mainly on how to, how, how to manage people. It's how to manage people, how far you can push, what's not mm. acceptable. Like I could see giving that course once. So that everybody knows or, or handing out like a booklet or something or like I mean, all formulating kind of, a, a, a conduct rules officially. Yes. And then handing that out and then, hey, read this. Make sure you understand if you violate this, you're going to get in trouble. Totally. Instead of saying, hey, you have to go to a class. I would accept it once every five years. Once every year just seems a little ridiculous to me. Like yeah. you think they're going to be paying attention in year two? No. Of, so like they're not even going to be paying attention in year one. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, so that's the second point. Uh, the third point was um, inappropriate inappropriate conduct engaged in the club personnel will be disciplined either by the team or the league or both. Um, and again, it's just it's kind of like similar to the second point, but it says there's going to be severe discipline enacted to uh, this appropriate, and they're going to ensure that the conduct does not occur again. Right. So if you do something wrong, yeah, your team might punish you, which was normal, but watch for the league to come behind them and add on to that now. I would go to as far as say that these classes that they have to take and stuff, whatever's happened already and just with the media mm -hmm. is a class enough. Yeah. Like lessons have been learned for the future. Yes. Obviously there's things in the past can't change things. More things will come out, but when we, this was the, the learning. When we first started talking about this, did you think? No. We, yeah. Like we knew more was coming, but I didn't think not to this, this quickly, level, like we've had, this severe. we've had five coaches. I mean, four, four have been let go. For, for those reasons. The fifth one was a performance, which we haven't got to yet. But. Do you remember the Detroit Red Wings' recent losing game uh, streak? Yes. It was like 12 games or 10 yes. games or something like that. You're going to bust the stat on me, are you? Go ahead. <laughs> All I like five it. coaches were fired before, before during they were in, that losing yeah. streak. <laughs> so five coaches had been fired since Detroit won a game. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. So like, And then who do they break their losing streak to? Boston. Heck yeah. No, it wasn't Boston. It was, who was it? It was just the other night. Winnipeg? It was Winnipeg. I don't remember. And then the second game was Montreal, Yeah, right? they beat Montreal last so night. When, so when Detroit beat Montreal, they now had the longest winning streak in their division <laughs> of two. <laughs> That's, That's amazing. an amazing stat. All right, and to finish this up with the Board of Governors, uh, number four is they're creating a hotline. So if any anyone that's part of a team, whether you're a trainer yeah. or a front office staff, Player. it's basically a whistleblower line. Uh, I think where that's can, really important. Yeah, where you can report conduct. Really, He's, really good idea. He said you can either do it anonymously or you can do it for attribution, I think was the word he used, um, so that if you want to follow up, they'll get back to you. Mm. So I, I think that's, I'm, I'm actually surprised there was nothing like that in place I was to gonna begin say with. That. Like I, that's, that really shocks me that that's not yeah. in place. Like that's, they're def they were definitely behind the times on a few things. Now they're trying to catch up and then advance. And yeah, like I said, that. Training course is the only thing I'm really a bit iffy on. That's that's is a little silly to me. I like the phone call or uh, the hotline thing. I think that's really important. That's a really good decision on Gary with for Gary Batman, the NHL, NHLPA, whatever. Good job. All right. Well, that kind of wraps up that whole the board of governors nonsense. Yeah. Now I see you over there with the Boston Bruins jersey on, and I see you over there with a Boston Bruins hat. That's all it I would got. be a little silly if we did not talk about the recent Tim Thomas okay. news. So he was inducted into the U.S. Uh, Hockey Hall of Fame, which is pretty awesome. Obviously a very talented goalie and one of the reasons why the Boston Bruins won the cup. Uh, a little bit controversial towards the end. A little bit. So that's a little that's bit. That's why I didn't like number one, I'm a Boston fan, and number two, when he didn't go to the White House, 
that irked people. Because there wasn't a lot of controversy. There wasn't at that time. No. So I didn't know if I should bring it up or not, but I mean, his remarks that he made after about struggling after the game. Yeah. I mean, it's probably worth talking about a little bit, but yeah, I think I read that he completely removed himself from the game. Basically, he stopped yeah. watching hockey. Like he had nothing he's to been do struggling with it. like mentally big yeah. time. Yeah. And he, but he also did say that he was the experience of coming back. And, to drop uh, the puck. To drop the puck mm-hmm. and meet the players again and stuff and uh, just receive that honor. Uh, he was qu- quite thrilled to be back in that atmosphere. Mm-hmm. So, no, that's And cool. he is the only reason Boston won that cup in 2011. He played lights out. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, they had a really good defensive team, but still, mm-hmm. he was by far yeah. uh, one of the best players that year for mm-hmm. Boston or any team. Um, so, yeah, congratulations, Tim Thomas. Uh, moving on, Peter DeBoer has been fired. Speaking of coaches who were fired, Peter DeBoer was let go. Do you know what the best part about this fire was? I do not. That they had to come out and say it wasn't related. Yeah, I to know. To the stuff. Which is good. Like, it's, there's so many good things that were said about him. Yeah. Uh, which is good in a way, but, but still. It, it's, it's it's weird that you have to say, yeah. we fired him, but it wasn't because he did some douchebag thing. Exactly. <laughs> it was fired because of performance of the team. Yeah. And here's the thing. <laughs> It's about expectations. Yes. You've got teams that are down in the gutter. They still have the same coach. Uh, we'll use Ottawa for example. I'll, even though Ottawa's playing actually decent hockey recently. But DJ Smith, it's about expectations. With you know, the San Jose Sharks, who have been a very good team for the last 15 years, it's about expectations. And even though you just you kind of had that skid, but then you went on a winning streak, you're still not where you need to be in the standings. And the expectations are that you are. Mm-hmm. up near the top of the Pacific. And if you're not, yeah, Peter DeBoer, well, we just found out he's, he's the, out the door. The parody in the league makes coaching way harder. Yeah, like, it's, it's unreal. So, And here's the thing. Peter DeBoer is a very good coach. Out of all the five <laughs> coaches who were just fired, I think he's most likely to find another position. And he has said that he will consider coaching again this year yes. if the situation is right. Like, yes. Like I'm not going to jump into some bottom barrel team. Yeah. And um, Bog... Bog. Bob Bugner, who was the assistant in San Jose, yep. um, who was a former Florida Panthers coach, um, he's taking over in San Jose. I'm personally not a big Bob Bugner, Bugner fan, mm-hmm. as uh, San Jose Sharks are my second favorite team. I'm not really happy with this transition, but I'm definitely willing to see what happens and stuff. Um, we'll go from there. They haven't given a time frame on him either. They just said he's the interim coach. Like, um, I suspect that he will be... Do you think he'll finish the yeah, year with yeah, it? He'll, I think he'll finish the year and probably get uh, Like a when contract. Rick Bounis replaced um jim montgomery he jim neil said he's gonna finish the year he's gonna as finish the, yeah coach they didn't specifically say that in san jose but you could assume that they're but just I'm gonna pretty see what he does. sure that's what was said in st louis last year when what's his nuts took over <laughs> for what's his nuts <laughs> he lost his nut yeah I, he lost his nut yeah <laughs> uh anyways we'll see what happens um but okay. i mean he had a record of 198 129 34 which is not bad it's like 60 percent win rate uh it's I mean, that's pretty decent. Yeah. So, I mean, it just shows you how hard it is, right? Yeah. And it's, again... And it also shows why there'll be teams looking at him saying, hey... Absolutely. Yeah. Totally. It's about expectations. Um, Some sad news out of the OHL. Uh, I don't know if all of you guys saw this play, um, but it was a really scary incident in, the, in an OHL game a couple of days ago. Uh, Tucker Tynan, who's a goalie, Someone crashed the net and a skate kind of went into the, I think it was the top of his he leg. He went in skate first on his legs. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I've never seen blood that quickly from, it no, reminded you... me, like the Clint Malarchuk thing with the neck was one of the most gruesome things I've seen in the ice with a lot of blood. There was so much blood with Tucker Dine in, in 10 seconds. It, it was unbelievable. I've never seen that much blood. It's a very, it's a very tough um, clip to watch. You if, sent it to me, and I refused to watch it. Yeah, if you have a weak stomach, I pr- any blood does gross you out. Do do not watch this game. So there was a or just a clip. Sorry, there was reports on Twitter, or not. I don't know if you call them reports. Just people saying like there was a fan in the stands. I don't know if you heard about this. I did, and he was yelling at the goalie when it happened, and he ended up leave. Either, I don't know if he left the arena or if he was kicked out. I believe he was escorted. He out. was escorted out. But did you hear the clarification of that? He was a met. Uh, he was actually like a, a combat medic, medic in the combat. army. Yeah, and he said he went like he went to the office the next day, and said I wasn't chirping him to get up or get off the ice because he was bleeding mm-hmm. out. I was saying you need to get him to a hospital because he's losing so much blood. Yeah, but did you see what the other fans around him said? Some of them were confirming it, but some of them were saying this is the same guy who was yelling at another player 
chirping him for being down earlier in the game that was hurt. Really? Yeah. Mm. So I don't know. There's two sides to the story yeah. here. We may never know what happens. Mm. It's hard to say. It's a hearsay at this point. So, But either way, it, it causes their games over the weekend to be canceled or yes, postponed. Yes, they will be re- rescheduled. Um, he had surgery. He's recovering now. He sent out a tweet. Uh, he's he's going to be okay. Uh, but, man, super scary. I uh, This is com- completely unrelated. And you've never heard this story. And there's only about maybe about 500 people who know that this happened. It's from my hometown. But basically, I was going to school with a guy. And this was, I think, in grade four. And his dad was chopping wood. And uh, his name's Thomas, the kid, the boy at the time, who was now an adult. But um, the head of the axe flew off of his father's axe, went back and landed right in the thigh of his leg. He was out of school for, I think, eight months or something like that. He had like hundreds of stitches up his leg. Um, It was crazy. Um, And that's what it reminded me of. Like, I can't imagine having that severe of an injury to the leg like there would have been so much blood for for thomas and stuff um but yeah it's i mean it's scary so mm. um anyways that's kind of all i have for news now this podcast is getting a little lengthy as it is i do have the game recaps to go through uh and i actually have a lot of notes look at all these notes hold on i gotta read some of the things i got yeah but look at all, look at all this i don't want to go through all that so i'm just gonna go through that quickly once you're done okay so um, I want to do an update on the World Cup of Hockey, which everyone probably knows now. It's not going to happen next year. Yes. Um, they're still talking about it. And basically, the date of when they're going to have it is determined based on how the negotiations go. Mm. So I guess the NHL wants the PA to sign off on certain things. PA is like, eh. And didn't they do a poll recently with the players that were going to the Olympics? They might have, but the league is still adamant that the Olympics is probably not going to happen just because of all the reasons we've talked about before. Yeah. Um, so that's the update in the World Cup. So most people pro- are projecting that it'll probably be like 2024, maybe. Like, they don't know. Like, they don't want to do it on the same years that Olympics, so they want to do the yeah. two years in between. So, like, the years that the Summer Olympics happen. Did you hear the rumors of the format of it? The all, the what? World Cup. No. Three on three. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. A hey, real interesting. I know for the All-Star game, they're talking about... Remember when, when Sydney and Malkin were up top of the... They were like up in a press box or like a club thing, and they were shooting pucks down to the... Oh, yeah, yeah. They're going to be doing that this year at the All-Star Game. Really? Apparently, they're going to have a net. That's amazing. And they're going to have all the players up in the thing, and they're going to have a contest to see who can get it the most in the net or closest to the net or something. That's incredible. It's just totally... Like, they're just trying to find ways to make it... Oh, sorry to interrupt you. I have something uh, that's actually hockey-related that I want to talk about. Um, It's about a rule change. Okay. But it's not... it's it's, It's a suggestion from a player. A goalie, to be more specific. Did you watch the segment in the between the first and second period, or maybe it was the second and third period of the game last night, where uh, Connor McDavid, uh, James Neal, oh, they on the Darnell table. Nurse around, they had the I didn't see that. Table. I seen it, but I didn't see it. It it was pretty good. Like yeah. it was it was good to see players off the ice. It's always good to see players' personalities and stuff. But uh, they were asked what kind of rule changes would you want to see, and the majority of what they said was get rid of the shootout. It's ridiculous. Basically, mm-hmm. is what they said. But um. I think it was Connor McDavid said that Mike Smith suggested that the glass at the top and the ends should be bowed out to be round, so that it flips the puck back. Yeah. yeah, but if you play Rocket League, you know that when the ball goes to the ceiling and it comes out, where does it go? Out in front of the net. Like, yeah, the players would be using that lip to their advantage to flip the puck from behind out in front of the net. I don't think it would ever happen. You can't do it. It would change the game, would it not? <laughs> it'd be in- yeah, it'd be interesting. It would change the game. You can do it. I like the suggestion at first, but the more I thought about it, the more I don't think it would work. But anyway, sorry, continue. Okay. Have you heard anything about Seattle? No. So Seattle is expected to unveil their name, logos, and colors in February or March of 2020. Get her done. Yep. Let's do it. So another interesting fact, which you can read there, Elliot Friedman was talking to some very big, big wigs that are stakeholders in the in the game, and they are predicting that Seattle is going to be in the top five of most valuable NHL franchises. And one of them is even on record as saying that he thinks they'll be the second highest earning team in the league. For what reason? Just the market. They think it's going to be nuts. It's going to be like way bigger than Vegas. But the Vegas market's pretty big. They're thinking Seattle is going to just dominate. Because of all the money that's in Seattle? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, that's what they're saying. I mean, there's a lot of money in Toronto. There's a lot of money in a lot of cities. How do you make more money than Toronto? (laughs) Or Montreal? Or... 
I can see Montreal maybe, but Toronto with all the business in Toronto and stuff. And New York? New York, Montreal. Chicago? Yep, Chicago. They're saying Boston? that they're saying top five. Right away? I assume term? or just maybe after a couple years. I don't like know. It didn't, it didn't say. It just said wow. that they're going they're going to be was the was the uh, phrasing. Well, they'll be second if they're, they're going to be a top five team, and one of them said I could see them being the second highest. Only if team. they're named the Kraken. <laughs> the Kraken. Because if they're named the Kraken, man, just think about it. This thing, okay, the game's starting. Like that, like this big thing that they skate out of, this big Kraken. Release the Kraken. <laughs> and the players come out. Man, that'd be awesome. Anyway. So, yeah, that's what I got on Seattle. And then here, I got a couple odds and ends here for you. Right. So, Frederick, An- Frederick Anderson has become the fastest European goalie in NHL history to reach 200 wins. He, wow. is, he is tied for fourth overall of all time. So Ken Dryden's one with 309. Braden Holby's number two. I didn't know that. Braden Holby's number two with That's, 319. Wow. Uh, Jacques Plant is third, 340. And then he's tied with Chris Osgood, Chris Osgood at 344. So, I mean, that's pretty good company you're that's with. That's extremely good company. So he's that's actually, really impressive. He's actually doing better than I thought he was. Like, I knew he was pretty good, but that's actually quite impressive. Wow. All right. And then I'll let you read the International Hockey Bullet. Because <laughs> we, uh. we practiced... <laughs> okay, a little bit of, we, we sent a message to our friend Mika, and we had to get the correct pronunciation of this player's name. Yeah, so basically a goalie scored against Sweden in his national team debut to make the game 5-1, and his name is Franz Tohima. <laughs> yes. So it's his very first game playing for Finland in international hockey. Yeah. He's the goalie. The game was 4-1. to one. He got the puck. He shot down the, the end of their end, and the goalie was pulled on the other end. Yeah. But he scored. So he got a, his very first game, he got a goal. Exactly. Now, we could have read this and butchered his name, but we do have a, a We did research, source. people. Yeah. Found. And we had to practice for about six minutes before we were comfortable with oh, it. Oh, And then just in local news, I put this just for us. So Moncton Wildcats, Moncton is literally like an hour and 20, an hour and a half away. Like, it's yep. super close. They have released their coach... And Director of Operations, John Torchetti, uh, effective immediately. And it says the decision was made for internal reasons that a change was required. Ooh. So this could be showing that some of what's going on in the NHL is beginning yes. to filter down, which is what we need. We need it to filter down, and then we need that filter to go back up. Exactly. Totally. Yeah. That's, that's actually interesting. So um, I had some other notes about some other stuff, but we can talk about that later. We don't have to do that in this podcast. All right. Well... Um, there's a lot of games last night. I'm not, I have a lot of notes here, and I honestly just don't want to read through them. <laughs> through them all, it's going to be another half an hour. So I'm just going to try and get this just just cherry pick quickly. I'm going to cherry pick. Yeah. So Ottawa and Columbus. Ottawa won four three in overtime. Anthony Declair is basically considered a legend in Ottawa now. The hat trick. Uh, Texier had a good uh, game last night as well. Two goals. Uh, really enjoyed watching him shine last year, and um, I'm following him a bit this year. Um, do you know what was said about Anthony Declair by Tortorella? No. He basically just chirped him a little bit for yeah i was gonna say it's not gonna be a good thing but but then declare scores a hat trick against a team that (laughs) tortorella coaches for so it's just funny moving on the islanders win in ot against buffalo 3-2 i watched that whole game actually uh bavillier was awesome he's really a glue to the kind of some of the lines on the team and the lines change around a little bit but he's basically been with uh uh, nelson uh, dalcole and eberle a little bit eberle played i think the majority of the game with that line last night I got the OT winner, but man, like Jack Eichel, I think it's like 29 points in six game, or 16 games or something like that now, or 26 points in mm-hmm. 16 games. It's ridiculous. Like, and incredible that he's putting that team on the back, putting that team on his back. Um, Anaheim beating the Rangers 4-3 in a shootout. Uh, two of those shots uh, from Anaheim, they have to be saved by Lundqvist. He just was, like, and he faced a lot of rubber last night. He looked really well, but man, two of those shots, not cool. That was a big win for Anaheim. They really needed that one. Carolina Calgary. Carolina won four to nothing. The Flames were on fire. Get it? Flames are on fire. Recently, since the new coach came in, looking like uh, the team we remember from last year, uh, a good portion of the first half of the game was actually being controlled by Calgary. They were looking really good, but um, they just couldn't find the back of the net. Uh, James Rammer's playing really well lately. Mm. Got the shout out in this game. The more I watch Johnny Gaudreau, the more I realize that I don't think anyone gives the puck away more than Johnny Gaudreau. It's it's a bit frustrating. I'm sure Calgary fans are frustrated also. Uh, the game after that was the Dallas-Nashville game. I didn't watch any of this this game, unfortunately. Dallas um, scored four unanswered goals, though, to get back in the game and, and get the win. Uh, Kudobin was fantastic from what I could see. And then um, recaps. Toronto and Edmonton. Toronto won 4-1. to Edmonton uh, was such a strong start to the season. And so many people, so many other fans, defending the fact that you can't win consistently with two superstars. And the rest of the lineup basically kind of being 
average for the most part. Mm-hmm. And I think non-surprisingly, they've been proven wrong a little bit of recently in their in the Edmonton struggles. They've lost three in a row. Uh, they're three, six, and one their last 10. And with that said, they're still second in the Pacific Division with 40 points, still have a pretty good great. Uh, they're in a, a really good great spot um, with lots of time to get back on track and probably take over the Pacific Division if they really wanted to. So uh, although I'm not on the side that you can't expect to win a championship with only two star players, uh, this isn't basketball. Mm-hmm. You need to have depth, yeah. and uh, Edmonton just needs a little bit more. And that's not to take away from any of the team, any of the players on Edmonton. There's lots of other good players on Edmonton. They just need a bit more depth. Uh, but Toronto with a very important win as they're trying to keep pace with Montreal, which is not a fast pace. <laughs> so no, it's unbelievable. It is quite It's so bad, that division. Yeah. Um, Philadelphia and Minnesota. Minnesota wins 4-1. to one. Minnesota's playing so good right now. I think Minnesota is the most underrated team in the NHL at the moment. If Minnesota plays the rest of the year like they have in their past 10 games, they're going to win the Stanley Cup. <laughs> Jeez. Yep. They're 9-1-3 and three at home, which is amazing because last year they struggled uh, immensely at home. So good home year for, for Minnesota. Uh, Philadelphia scores in their first shot of the game, but after that it was basically no thanks by Alex Daylock. He wanted the win, and he shot the door. Philadelphia had 18 shots. 18 shots? You ain't going to win a game with 18 shots. Yeah. But that's how Minnesota's winning. They're shutting down teams in the neutral zone in their own end, forcing pucks to the outside and putting high pressure along the boards to win the win the battles. The game after that, the Detroit and Montreal game, I don't really want to talk about this one, but Detroit won 2-1. <laughs> to one. Despite the last, pu- pa- last couple of games for Detroit, they've been by far one of the worst teams in region NHL history to start a season. Like, they've been real bad um so you think that montreal could get a win last night and they could not and just think about it montreal maybe in the past past 10 years they've had years where they've missed the playoffs by a point or yep. two points you think about this game think about when yeah. when april comes around and montreal misses the playoffs this especially year by a point. with the race that's going on like i it, know think about this it's game. so bad but it's everyone's so close like it's crazy like everybody's just bad um uh, bernier was unbelievable for detroit last night he uh i mean well montreal got burned get it <laughs> that's two in like a got minutes. him uh washington and tampa bay washington won five two i honestly didn't watch any of this game but washington continues their their dominance basically of the entire league now 53 points up on the year five ahead of second place so they're really having a great year yeah uh boston florida did you watch this game i did and i'm glad or i'm disappointed that you picked florida in this game <laughs> I don't even, oh, you did. Oh, because Boston was on like a big losing streak. I know, but you got to, come on, man. You got to help me out here a little bit. Yeah, I need Florida to win. Yeah. Actually, I need Boston to win. Florida to stay behind for my Canadians. But uh, Boston won 4-2. Um, uh, Pasternak, two goals. Yep. He's having a good season. Now, were they easy goals or were they Pasternak goals? Well, they were, well, one of them was a tip. That's fine. I mean, Pavelski's made his career from tips. I mean, he's having a great year. I'm... The only thing I'll say about Pasternak is, like like who else you were talking about earlier? Who, uh, Johnny Hockey? Yeah. He gives the puck away a lot. Yeah. But I think he's, I think he's, the coach, I don't think the coach likes it, but I think the coach understands in order to make the high plays that he makes, there's risk. Yeah. So I, th- I think he's saying, like, I don't like you losing the puck, but I'm not going to yell at you to tell you not to do that anymore because I know sometimes that works and you get goals. It's the PK Suma effect. It is. It's but he's having a way reward. better season than P.K. <laughs> Subban. is basically doing nothing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, um, Game after that was the L.A. Pittsburgh game. Really exciting game. Uh, Pittsburgh won 5-4 in a shootout. Unbelievable save by Quick. Did you see it? No. Oh, man, you got to watch the highlights. It was unreal. Definitely save the year candidate. Uh, it's it's quite amazing that Pittsburgh keeps winning despite all their injuries. They're basically the Wilkes-Barre, uh, Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins <laughs> playing in the NHL. Like, they're just so riddled with injuries. It's a... Uh, it's pretty impressive. Uh, the New Jersey Arizona game. I kind of mentioned this earlier. New Jersey won two to one. Uh, probably a statement game from the players. I think with the whole Taylor Hall thing going on. So we already touched on that. So I'll skip this one yep. further. Uh, Chicago St. Louis. Did you hear about this game? No. St. Louis won four three. Ooh. Guess how many goals they scored in the fourth period? St. Louis. Oh, I did hear about this game. Heck yes, yeah. I did. I was reading about it. Yep. Four three win for St. Louis. Unreal comeback by the Blues. That's brutal. Um, despite the loss, though, Crawford I thought was really unbelievable in this game. Um, so. A little bit of positivity and a loss for Chicago, if you want to look at it that way. San Jose and Vancouver wrapped up the games last night. San Jose, San Jose won 4-2. to two. Bob Bugner, Bugner gets his first win as a San Jose Sharks oh, new coach. <laughs> uh, today's games. Let's make some predictions. Philadelphia and Winnipeg. Ooh. It's 
kind of a tough one because yeah. Philly's so under the radar right now, but still sneaking in wins. It's in Winnipeg, See, I think. Normally, I would want to go for Winnipeg because I like Winnipeg. But I was really hoping Philly was going to win last night for their boy, and they didn't. They didn't. So today, sorry, Winnipeg. I'm going to pick Philly, and hopefully you can go for your boy. Back to back, though. Winnipeg didn't play last night. I know. Philly I'm going did. for Philly. All right. I'm going to go for Winnipeg, even okay. though I'm wearing the Philly jersey. Uh, Minnesota and Chicago. I think it's in Chicago. I think. Hmm. I'm going to go against the green with you again. What? I'm going Chicago. Man, Minnesota's mm-hmm. on a roll. I know. Rolls are meant to be ended. All right. I'm picking Minnesota. Uh, L.A. versus Detroit. <laughs> Jeez, I'm going L.A. <laughs> Man, the, Detroit is 100% winning this game. The two-game streak is over. Man, I will bet you a free meal at McDonald's that Detroit wins this game. <laughs> All right, I'll take Let's it. Shake on it. Heck yeah. All right, uh, Vancouver versus Vegas. Vegas. I'm also going with Vegas for this one, yeah. Playing pretty good recently. Okay, so last thing this podcast is actually completely unhockey related, but it's really important to me because uh, during the summer in July, I put a tweet out and I asked for help. Um... I needed to help a buddy that I worked with. He's a DJ in in Prince Edward, Prince Edward Island and a very successful and a very uh, good DJ, but he wanted to do some rebranding, so he asked me to do a logo for him, and I just didn't have the time. And then the idea that I had in my head, I just I knew that I couldn't do it the way that I wanted it to be done. Yeah, so, yeah you could visualize it, but you couldn't put yeah, that into... I can do decent things in Photoshop, but when it comes to creating logos, I really struggle, especially in Illustrator and stuff. Um, so I reached out and I asked if, if anyone would be willing to help me out and design me a logo, anyone with more skills than me, um, in exchange for kind of a, a little plug, a shout out. And uh, I do apologize that it's taken this long, um, but it's a pretty epic logo. I want to show it to you and I'm going to show all you guys too. So uh, the person who did it, Lonely Macaroni. What a freaking awesome name. Lonely Macaroni? Yeah. Um, so it, his name's Tyler. He's a DJ. Uh, and I'm first going to show you the logo, and then I'm going to show you where you can find some of uh, her work. She's from Germany, I believe. Check that Ooh, out. You like that? Yeah. Yeah. So she made a couple of different renditions of the logo that I had in mind, and she presented her own rendition, which I liked way better than what I had in mind. So... Uh, I think that's actually what he ended up picking, which is this one. Um, I mean, it's pretty awesome. I'll put it up on the screen so all you guys can see it. I really like it. Uh, like, picture that on a black t-shirt right there. It's giving me like a Pink Floyd kind of vibe or yeah, something. Yeah, because of the triangle thing. Yeah. yeah. I really like it. It's it's awesome. So um, Shout out to Lonely Macaroni. Heck yeah. And if you guys need any, any graphic design work done, maybe you're thinking about starting your own YouTube channel or maybe you're... I don't know, maybe your own business or something like that. Maybe you're maybe you're thinking about mowing lawns this summer and you need a logo to put on a piece of paper to pass around. You contact the Lonely Macaroni. Uh, you can find some of her work on uh, Instagram slash A-N-T-O-N-I-A. And I think it's underscore J-U-N-G. Or on uh, redouble.com, R-E-D-O-U-B. L E dot com slash D E slash people slash T O N I J U N G. I will put those links in the description of this yes. podcast um, for you guys to check out. So definitely a shout out to her. If you have any, any interest in having a logo designed or anything graphical, please reach out to her. She was awesome to deal with. Um, super easy. Like she made something and I asked for some, for a couple of modifications and she didn't argue. She didn't, put up a fight she was just like yeah told like i understand so let me try this and stuff and she wasn't afraid to kind of show me something that she created herself and so she was just a blast to work with she was awesome so um, check her out for sure and go look at some of her other work as well on some of, some of those sites see if you like something that kind of wraps up this podcast yep um, you have anything else to say we have a diaper party to go to now well, oh right <laughs> yeah uh jason's <laughs> brother-in-law yep is uh expecting a kid well he's not my sister is <laughs> so there's a diaper party I don't so know apparently what when you go to a diaper party this is what my wife told me like an hour before we started this podcast you're actually supposed to bring diapers what kind of diapers like di- like real diapers for like baby diapers what if we brought him depends instead <laughs> maybe we should i don't know do you think that would be offensive i think it's and appropriate completely useless yeah i don't uh, know i have to think about it 
anyways i guess we're gonna go buy diapers now so yep uh thanks guys for for listening and watching i really appreciate it if you're if you're listening on on itunes and i recently got an iphone so or spotify kind of looking on itunes a little bit uh we have some really positive reviews on itunes and i want to thank everyone for that if you do listen on itunes if you haven't left a review it really helps us a lot if you could leave a review even if it's like if you don't like the podcast and whatever leave a negative re- review <laughs> yeah um, although if you do like it that would be awesome if you could leave a positive review um on spotify leave a review can you leave reviews on i don't spotify? think so but but I think uh, I think with Spotify, the more people that listen to it, the popularity bar goes up. Uh, okay. So that help that's helpful too. Mm. Um, and yeah, just remember uh, episode one hundred. Episode one hundred. Yeah, there might be something oh. interesting going on for audio listeners only. Don't know though. So, we cannot confirm or deny yeah, that. It's eight episodes away. So yeah, no 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 confirmations, but no denying. There mm. might be something going on in that episode. So shout out again to Greg for helping us with the studio. Absolutely. Shout out to all the people that have donated. That's awesome. 14 of you guys are awesome. Um, we're going to keep plugging away at this this week. Like we, we understand visually we got to create more depth and color and stuff. So we're going to keep working on that. But a lot of work's been done. I'm looking forward to doing that little video of showing the behind the scenes and the 3D rendering we did of the desk. Yeah, we did a 3D rendering of the desk um, and took some pictures of, I think, every step of the desk building process. Yeah. Um, it won't be a long video. It'll just be a short yeah, video. Yeah, it's gonna be a short video. But, but yeah, so we'll tell you all how we made the desk and what materials were used. And it's just nice to have all this space. This is by far the most space we've yeah, ever had. If you look on the t- screen, you'll see that I don't know. There's a pretty decent distance be- between us, but there's this table is actually huge. Like someone could sit down here. The mixer's over here. Like we could easily fit four people in here. Like when we were doing four people before, like when your dad and Justin was here, we were literally standing on a table or sitting on a table that was less wide than oh, one yeah. of these sides. And we were just all crunched together. So if we had to do another video like that, we could have like nine people on this table. <laughs> Legitimately. We could have a round. What shape is this? I'm calling it round because it's a triangle. Yeah. We, we could have, we could legitimately have probably nine people. We can table. easily have four people with four mics and a call-in person comfortably. Yeah. So here's, the, so the long term, uh, we want to try and raise enough money so we can buy another one of these mics at least, probably two eventually. Uh, for four people because it's it's when you buy different kinds of mics there's level issues if we all have the same mics we know how they work mm-hmm. the levels can all be the same basically it's just it's way less of a headache so two more of these mics which are road procasters amazing mics not a sponsor but we're can't just, say we're just good things. we're just happy with them yeah um phone-ins are going to be awesome the lip needs to be done uh we want to get into multiple camera angles so if you're talking about something, we, we could have camera angle zoomed in on on him. That's uh, not, uh, it's not a complicated process. It's just a a time consuming process. It can yeah. be, and obviously a financial process because you have to buy other cameras and uh, more cards and stuff. So it's a long term play. Yeah. So that's like anyone who contributes on Patreon. That's where all that money goes is to uh, trying to increase the production value of of what uh, what we make. And um, it'll just continue to grow. That's really what we're trying to do is just continue. We're not professionals. We don't claim to be professionals. We're just trying to be as professional (laughs) as we can be. Have you seen this? (laughs) Uh, So, yeah. Uh, Thanks to everyone who's ever supported us and continues to support us and supported us with this table. Um, Yeah, you guys mean a lot. So thanks so much. And uh, we'll catch you next week in podcast number 93. 93. (laughs) We'll see you later. Adios.